Hey guys, and how you going again? And today I'll be going through classification methods. So in classification, what we can do is we can uh, open up, what you first want to do is uh, open up uh, two layers, and the one I'm going to be working with is the one that we finished in the radiometric video, um, where we've re reduced, um, removed the atmospheric constituents. Uh, we've done the dark subtraction method. So then once we've done this, we can uh, then go into start making some regions of interest because we'll be doing um, supervised classification. So in order, in order to do the supervised classification, we have to define um, some certain areas which have typical characteristics, uh, like typical pixel values, and then we want to define all the other areas to go into either one of those two groups. Um, so I've already defined two, I'll just define one more just to show you how it's done. So I'm just gonna, if you just click on the region of interest tool up here, you can then go to um, uh, you can change the the color and then you can hit the plus button to make a new region of interest and then i'm going to call this one uh sand call that sand and i have the polygon tool selected so then all i have to do is just select in the area there you go an area has been selected so now the computer knows that this area is called sand oh and accidentally i did two areas called sand so let's just um remove that then I'll make a new one, call it water. Oh, that's my fault. Water, and then new region of interest, call this sand. There we go. Bam, 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 bam. And now you can see we have three over to the side. So now that we've created our regions of interest, we might want to export our regions of interest into like a whole new layer. So in order to do that, we just go to File, export and then we export to classic this will create a dot roi file or a regions of interest file is what you can call it so i'm just going to um, get the one that i created before for this video uh, actually hang on uh, loading 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 what are we loading there we go okay so now um let me just uh, remove this very quickly because it's um, it's been added to the ones that I just created, and I don't want that. I want to have just the ones I'm working with. Just the ones. So it's just been added here. Then you just want to hit load data, and then there you go. So there are all my layers that I've created previously. That's exactly what I want to see, and then I can start doing a bunch of different um. Uh, workings with these regions of interest, uh, I can create a plane of just these regions. So if I do create classification image, uh, select all items, yep, okay. Uh, then I just want to choose a place. I'll just call this, uh, make a new folder, call it test2, that'll do. Um, let's call it black underscore layer. You'll see why I'm calling this black underscore layer, but you should call it uh, something more appropriate to you. So I hit OK. There you go. Now I have just the regions of interest and nothing else. Uh, this has been created as a new layer. So the other layers are still here. I can turn it off and then there you go. Uh, so now what I want to be doing is I want to um, I want to see the separability of these regions of interest. Um, so you want the regions of interest, remember, to um, have as much like variance between groups and, ha and have as little variance within groups. So you want a group of um, brunettes to stand very, very closely together and you want them you want them to stand away from blondes. So that's basically what we're doing. So we could do compute region of interest separability. Then we just go to OK after we've selected everything. Uh, then we can see, uh, see a table like this here. So what this is doing is this is computing the, um, uh, like the, the, the separability, I suppose you could say, um, of each of the of each of the regions of interest against some other region of interest. So you can see I have the group, if you look at my mouse on the left hand side, um, I have the group develop land. So it's comparing the develop land against the other six regions of interest. So I have seven in total. Um, so I'm comparing developed against closed and open forest, against water body, water body, a bare dry ground, bare dry ground, against wetland, sand, and bare wet ground. And so developed is being compared against these six, um, closed is being compared against these six, water bodies being compared against uh, the remaining six, and so on and so on and so on. And so these numbers here, uh, there's two numbers in each case. 
um, both of these numbers correspond to either of the two tests up here. So you have the Jeffries um, Matthew Sita test and the transform divergence test. Um, a, a good way of knowing if your groups are correct or not is if the these values are above 1.9. So um, I can see that d the developed region of interest um, is not at all similar to the closed open forest region of interest because I'm getting a 1.9, or I'm getting above 1.9, and here I'm getting 2, which is also above 1.9. And I can see that for each of the values, um, for each of the tests, through all my uh, different things. So that's all very good. Now what we can also do is um, we can, uh, what do I want to show you next? I think I will, hang on, I think I know it was probably pretty important that I should show. Um, if I just go to the regions of interest here and then I go right click statistics for all ROIs, this will create a graph, uh, there it is, um, this shows you uh, where the separability is for each band between, between all of these and um, I know I don't have it, but preferably your standard deviation should be like below three. Um, because if you think of like a bell curve, um, let me just bring it up actually. Um, if you think of a bell curve like this, right, um, you want to make sure that the standard deviation, because one standard deviation is the furthest to the left of the red and the furthest to the right of the red. So in the middle, you should have the mean, uh, then you have one standard deviation um, to the green two standard deviations to the blue, and three standard deviations to the white. Um, so in each case, it's one standard deviation away from the mean. Um, so you want your standard deviation uh, value in each case to be below three because um, I'm pretty sure it corresponds to, there are three standard deviations in a bell curve, so uh, yeah. Uh, where's my graph going away? There it is. Okay, so um, if you want to know the separability, the best um, separability for each band for each region of interest, um, you look at the highest point. Um, so yellow, you can't really see the X, Y, so I'll use orange. Um, so the X is 0 0.8. So um, the wavelength, um, at the bottom here I have wavelengths, so the wavelength 0 0.8 is the best point of separability um, for this region of interest between the other bands, between the other regions, sorry. So um, the band 0 0.8, whatever 0 0.8 is in a band, so um, it, when I say a band, a, a band for red might be like 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 or something, right? So uh, that would mean that my region of interest that corresponds to orange, which over here is bare dry ground, it means that the bare dry ground region of interest is separated best from the other regions of interest, like sand and water, um, in the red band, which is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. But in this case, I have 0 0.8, so that would be um, blue, green, red, it would be near infrared if that's the case. And so you can see that for each line. So remember, the highest point is the point of most separability. So light blue is 0 0.8, red is 0 0.8, orange is 0 0.8. Yellow is, uh, I can barely see that, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 maybe. But anyway, that's where you can see those values there. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to create a, am I recording? I have no idea. Yes, I am recording. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, now I want to show you how to produce, um, <clears throat> how to produce a 4D animated graph uh, from this stuff. So what I want to do, what I want to bring up, uh, I'll do that. I want to create, uh, click the region of interest tool. We're going to click that again. Uh, black layer, no, why are you down there? There we go. So now what I want to do, clicking on the regions of interest, I want to show a graph, a 4D graph. So what I'm going to press is, I'm going to press send regions of interest to N and D visualizer. So if I click on this, all the bands are selected. That's perfect. Um, great. Now all that we have to do is um, we have to decide, um, actually we don't really have to decide at all, we just have to do, um, these are the bands by which we'll be creating axes um, to show the separability of our regions of interest. So one is blue, two is green, and so on and so on and so on. So you have blue, green, red, near infrared, blah blah blah, whatever they are. 
So I'm going to hit blue and green. So now we have two axes, um, blue by green. And then we have um, red and near infrared. So what we have now is a 4D graph, but you're probably looking like, oh, I can only see two axes. I can only see Y up and down and X left and right. Well, you can uh, look at a 4D graph by pressing start. So start will, all that it will do is it'll spin the graph constantly and you can change the speed, uh, change it way, way down. And then you can go full screen if you want, and you can see um, the separability of each group. So you want each group of color to be um, separate from the other groups. So if I try to find a good space to stop this, um, come on, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to do this, I suppose. Um, so the green area, which corresponds to uh, the green area, corresponds to closed and open forest, and the yellow area, the yellow points, sorry, correspond to sand. So if I look at the the cluster of green, uh, this means that um, pixels that would become forest um, have a very small area to be defined as forest. Um, but the yellow, which is sand, means that points vary widely. And so the um, <coughs> uh, all pixels um, are a digital number between 0 and 256. So if I have a pixel which is like 0 to 10, it might be defined in one of these groups, and uh, a much, much higher value might be defined as sand. Um, and so what you're, what you're really, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to see the separability. So before I talked about being above 1.9, uh, that's telling you the, the actual values, and this is showing you like um, the separability of the groups. This is a visual representation of that. So that's all pretty cool and nice. And um, now I want to do one final thing with you guys. Um, that is, I want to create, um, I want to create a an actual um, thematic layer. So I want to get. Uh, let me turn off this. I want to get all these pixels in this image and I want them to be defined as any one of these groups. So that's what we can do by going to classification and then supervise classification and then we can choose one of three methods. And if you want to see how these methods are defined, you just want to go up to help, uh, contents, and then once you get to the page, you just want to type in at the top right search bar whatever you're looking at. So uh, if I want to look at all these definitions and stuff, I will press, I'll go to help, contents, F1, um, to, or help, or, or you can just do press the F1 key. Um, then I would type in like supervised classification in the search bar, and then I can see a definition of whatever I'm working with. So there are three here to begin with. So this is the, I'll just show you two. Um, I might show you three, uh, depending on what I want to do. Um, so I want to click the base map layer, which is what I'm working with. It's the um, Dunwich Landsat, blah, 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 blah. It's just the left image that I'm working with, not the raw, which is the right image. So I have my left one selected. OK, now if I hit select all items, you might notice this will produce an error. You'll, you'll notice how there's 11 regions of interest, but I only have seven here. So this is because whenever you open up Envy and then you start adding and then removing layers, removing regions of interest, sorry, that are incorrect or something, um, Envy, uh, because it's still open, even though you removed layers, Envy can still see them. So even though I can't see any more than seven regions of interest here, Envy can see all of those that I've removed in case I want to bring them back for later. Um, so you could have like removed them, but you could still use them, but I don't want to do that. So I have buildings, uh, but I don't have buildings here because I just made that a second ago and then I deleted it. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to click developed and then holding down control. I want to select all the other, uh, all the other important ones. Um, so assuming I have two sand here, <laughs> uh, this would be a bit of a problem. I don't know which is which. So I'm just going to have to like guess, I suppose. Uh, actually, I'll do without. I'll do without. I'll do close and open for us. Uh, water body, is it just one water body? Yes. There's bare dry ground, wetland vegetation. Oh, there's actually three sands. <laughs> that's a problem. Oh, well. Um, so I have six at least. That's fine. That's fine, I suppose. Uh, actually, sand. This, this is all in the same group, so maybe this is right. Let's just see. 
So then I can create um, two outputs. So first is the rule, output rule. So the rule um, layer is just a, a layer to hold data. Don't worry about it. Um, so you can make it, you can do it in memory if you want. I'm just gonna actually make it. Oh, not that, ugh, that's wrong. <laughs> um, so I wanna call this, uh, call this parallel. Make sure that you call your file something important. Parallel piped. Parallel piped rule, and then I just want to create this one. I'll just call it parallel piped. Parallel piped, excellent. Okay, so then, um, then you can see the maximum standard deviation from the main. So, uh, this all this information will make sense if you go into help and search up these different classification methods. Then all of this will make sense as to what these values mean here. Okay, uh, so um, uh, yeah, I think I might just do one instead of doing all three actually. Um, but the three main ones you should look at are the parallel piped, the maximum likelihood classification, and the minimum distance classification. So the minimum distance one is um, the minimum distance is essentially just uh, whichever pixel, uh, uh, whichever group a pixel is closest to, it'll be defined as that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is anyway. And then you'll have the parallel piped, which I believe is um, uh, if a pixel is within a standard deviation of a mean of a group, um, it'll be defined as that. So um, if you think of every group of um, pixels, right, every group of pixels um, has a different digital number um, within a certain area. If you remember that 4D graph I created. So if you have uh, like a group of pixels and you maybe have like... Um, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then the mean would probably be 5 in the center. So if a, so in the parallel piped, um, you remember to just do help contents search, making sure that I'm right, don't take my word for it. Um, I'm pretty sure that it is, um, if a pixel is, def uh, is closest to the mean of that group, so 5, um, then that pixel will take the, uh, will take the, um, it'll be classified as whatever that is. So if sand has digital numbers 1 to 10, um, then that pixel, if it has a value, say, 6, which is closest, which is closer to 5 than, than water, where its mean may be like 40, then that pixel will be defined as sand. Um, so what we're doing, uh, turn that off. Okay, so what we're doing is we're trying to define similar areas as sand. So if you look at this base image, these white areas, I want all these white areas to be defined as sand. So you can see that kind of happening, but some of the land, some of the pixels are being misclassified as developed. Um, so depending on the classification method that you choose, um, pixels will be defined into different groups or different bins, I suppose you could call them, differently. Um, so if you, if I were to look at, say, um, <clears throat> uh, if I were to look at, say, let me, uh, make, let me actually do one more just to see if I can show you. Um, I'll do the minimum distance. Actually, no, I'll do maximum likelihood. So then I'll hit the uh, base map. Then I'll choose the exactly what I did the before. Seven in total. Um, I'll just call this, um, I'm doing likelihood on a likelihood. All right, and then I'll do the rule. Go into likelihood rule. Okay, um, data scale factor of one. Make sure that you look up so you can understand what this means. Okay. So there you go. Um, so just like that, I have created two different classification methods. Um, this is the rule layer. Don't ever, ever, ever worry about the rule layer. Just ignore the rule layer. You never need to look at it. So whenever it gets made, just switch it off. Okay, so this is the parallel pipe that you see currently, and this is the likelihood. So if I look at just sand, just the yellow areas, you can see between the two different classification methods, um, each one defines pixels as sand differently. Okay. So I hope I have gotten everything. I hope I've told you everything. I hope you guys have learned something from these videos. And um, if you guys need any help, uh, just go straight over to help contents. Anyway, um, have a great time, guys, and I hope you have learned something.